and welcome to worship at St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Claremont, North Carolina. We are so glad to have you with us today on this All Saints Sunday, this Sunday in which we celebrate the baptized people of God, living and dead, who are the body of Christ. As November heralds the dying of the landscape in many northern regions, the readings and liturgy of today call us to remember all who have died in Christ and whose baptism is complete. At the Lord's table, we gather with the faithful of every time and place, trusting that the promises of God will be fulfilled and that all tears will be wiped away in the new Jerusalem. And so let us begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, you are children of God. And Jesus, our beloved, opens the door for us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared to us from the foundation of the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for this day comes from the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter. After I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation and from the, all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the, the Lamb robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood before the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading for this day comes from 1 John, 
the third chapter. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The gospel of the Lord praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from him who was, who is, and who is yet to come, Jesus the living Christ. Amen. On this All Saints Sunday, I want to briefly share with you some reflections on three questions. Who is to be considered a saint? How is it that one becomes a saint? And why it is we celebrate this day? So, who is to be considered a saint? One tradition considers putting the official title of saint on those Christians who have lived extraordinary lives. They have the fame of sanctity or the fame of martyrdom. For those with either of those, quote, fames, Close attention is given to whether special favor or a miracle occurred on account of their intercession. Special attention is given as to whether they themselves performed a particular miracle. Attention is also given as to whether by way through a candidate's intercession a miracle occurred. In consideration for granting the title of saint, further examination and validation is needed. If the person was martyred, then the circumstances around which that person was martyred are verified. And if not martyred, the candidate's life is examined to see if his or her life embodied holy virtues and charity. Now, this is only, we're not even through the examination and uh, all the protocols in terms of becoming a saint. But to this point, a person may be beatified or blessed. They are considered especially graced by God and highly esteemed in the church by their faith and example. In order, however, to become saint, one has to be validated. Well, if one is truly martyred, 
then one may then be considered for sainthood. If not martyred, then another miracle must be validated by his or her action or by intercession. And finally, then a candidate is granted the title saint only by the church who grants the title of sainthood. Well, when we think about it in this way, are we only to consider those who have lived extraordinary lives of faith and action and perhaps martyrdom as being labeled as saints? The New Testament answers this question for us. It is not those whose lives of faith are associated with extraordinary acts bearing some type of fame. Rather, it is those who are broken, vulnerable sinners who are made saints. Who we consider to be a saint is here directly connected with how one becomes a saint. According to the New Testament, primarily in Paul's writings, all who have come into relationship with Christ by grace through faith, those who are baptized, sealed with the Spirit and marked with the sign of the cross forever, are made saints of God, not by their own doing, but rather by God's doing. I would direct you to please read Romans chapters 5 through 8 to see Paul's exposition on this. This is why Paul writes to the church in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord. Notice the emphasis on sanctified and all. Sainthood is not some exclusive designation. Saints are those who are joined to Christ in his death and resurrection, are those who know and live in his righteousness in the newness of life, and who receive and know the dynamic presence of the Holy Spirit all by grace through faith. Who are the saints? They are those whom Presbyterian minister Peter Marshall referred to as saints of the rank and file. The rank and file include, as Jesus stated in the Beatitudes, those who are beatified, blessed, those who are poor in spirit, those who mourn the meek, those who in their poverty hunger and thirst for righteousness, as well as those who recognize the vulnerability of human life and its brokenness, who are compassionate and merciful towards others. Jesus' rank and file also includes those who are pure in heart, who primarily strive to remain faithful in their love and service to God and neighbor. It is also in those willing and who offer themselves for the work of peace. The rank and file also includes those who give evidence of their faith in word and deed, who suffer persecution, ridicule, and perhaps are reviled and attacked by way of prejudice, injustice, and violence. And so we see here that sinners of the rank and file who are justified by grace through faith are saints of God. Sinners of the rank and file are real human beings, real children, men, and women. Frederick Buechner writes of saints, he says, I mean saints as men and women who are made not out of plaster and platitude and moral perfection, but out of human flesh. I mean saints who have their rough edges and their blind spots like everyone else, but whose lives are transparent to something so extraordinary that every so often it stops us dead in our tracks. We celebrate this day not to herald the extraordinary lives of faith that have been lived, who deserve the title saint. We celebrate this day on account of the extraordinary grace whereby we are made saints. We celebrate this day to 
lift up the extraordinary grace that we have known in and through others that we know and love and those we have known and loved. When we think of the special category of sainthood, author Phyllis McGinley captures for us that they too were human. She wrote a book some years ago entitled Saint Watching, and she writes this about the saints. Now, we're talking about all the saints through, not all of them, but many of these that she looked at uh, through the history of Christendom. And she writes this about them. The wonderful thing about saints is that they were human. They lost their tempers, got hungry, scolded God, (laughs) were egotistical or testy or impatient in their turns, made mistakes and regretted them. Still, they went on doggedly blundering toward heaven. I don't know about you, but for me, that's a bit comforting. (laughs) It's real. It's who we are. For indeed, we are sinners who are made saints. And so we observe this day. Why do we observe this day? Well, we follow in accord with the Augsburg Confession. Now, for you who do not know what the Augsburg Confession is, it is the authoritative statement and accurate witness to Scripture that succinctly states in accord with Scripture whom Lutherans know God to be, what it is we believe, and also captures the nature and practice and mission of the church. In Article 21 of the Augsburg Confession, it states the following. It is also taught among us that saints should be kept in remembrance so that our faith may be strengthened when we see what grace they received and how they were sustained by faith. Moreover, their good works are to be an example for us, each of us in his or her own calling. Notice the shift here. The focus is on the extraordinary grace they received and of how their lives were sustained by faith. Their good works are considered only insofar as they are an example and encouragement to us in our lives by grace through faith as saints of God. In closing, I quote the letter of 1 John Chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called, and here I change it. He says, children of God. I change it that we should be called saints of God. And that is who we are. On this day, yes, we remember and celebrate the saints. We remember and give thanks to God for the loved ones whom we know now and whom we have known in times past, who are transparent to something or someone extraordinary that stops us dead in our tracks. On this day, thanks be to God that we have been and are made saints by grace through faith. And on this day above all, thanks be to God and Jesus Christ by his death and resurrection and the Holy Spirit who joins us to Christ, his righteousness and new life. (laughs) Saints of God are we. (laughs) Praise be to God. A blessed All Saints Day to you. Amen. And now let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs who sacrifice as witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists, conserv conservationists, and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and share our common good. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every venture, anoint us with the missionary spirit of the early church. Bless all new missions of our synod. Empower testimony for new communities of faith to shape a diverse witness to your saving power. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of every time, countless are the multitudes who have called your name and gathered to you. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in this past year. And in faith may we join with them in ceaseless praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive your, these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. <laughs>